So we're doing a deep dive into vectors. And what are vectors? Vectors are moves we make with our skincare devices that cut across areas of common facial sag. So if we have little sausages right here, we're gonna wanna do a vector here and a vector here. Um, there's all sorts of vectors, but I'm gonna go into it more deeply so that you can get the very best out of every treatment you do with any device to your skin. Stay tuned, that's coming up next. Welcome back, Christine Beyer here, licensed esthetician for 23 years. And on this channel, we talk about your skincare journey because it's never one thing that we do to make our faces look better. It's a whole combination of things. And we're always learning, right? We're always learning what agrees with my skin, what doesn't agree with my skin, how much exfoliation is good for my skin, how much is not, how much is too much, and what ingredients our skin may be dying for, lacking, and also what works best when we use our devices, right? And so let's talk about microcurrent, for example. If you don't do microcurrent, you should. Why do we use microcurrent? Because as we age, they get signals from the brain how much ATP to make due to how much we use them, right? And so I have a perfect story of this. So our tonicity of our facial muscles depends on how much we move our face, right? And while some people may be like, I'm not gonna make my make a face so I don't have to get Botox, <laughs> that's not a good idea because that causes facial atrophy or muscle atrophy. Use it or lose it, right? And so I have a perfect story for this and I've told the story many times. I was working with a client who said, she was working at the library and she was reading books to toddlers up on a stage. And she said, shortly thereafter, they changed me to a quieter position in the library and I really miss the kids, but that's when I noticed that my face fell. And I'm like, well, that makes total sense because if your brain decides how much tonicity your muscles have and how much ATP is gonna be produced because of that, and ATP is the muscle that the mitochondria of the cell produce, right? And so if you use a muscle more, mitochondria of that muscle, they're gonna be making more, right? And so ATP, adenosine triphosphate, we need this and microcurrent gives it to us in spades and in a, delivery method that the body can accept and not fight off. It's not too much. So this gal was, when she was making crazy faces, reading books to toddlers. I mean, you think about the nutty faces you know, ooh, ah, ooh, that you make with little kids, just talking to them, but reading a book? Oh, come on. <laughs> if you wanted to get your face in shape, start reading toddler's books to your grandchildren or your own kids. Mine wouldn't take to it too much because she's 12 now, but. <laughs> so that's when she said she saw her face fall. And so the brain's like, well, I don't need to spend a whole bunch of ATP over here. So let's just rearrange it. Let's just let these muscles sag because they're not being used. And how can we counteract that? Microcurrent. <laughs> and. I love microcurrent because it's safe, it's easy, it's like very forgiving. If you mess things up, you just stop doing that movement. Like if you get extra volume somewhere, you just stop doing that movement over that area and you're fine. So microcurrent and vectors are like best friends. This is the perfect device to use vectors on this and maybe you know radio frequency heat based devices lasers I'd love to use those devices across vectors why why do we do vectors because we can be using a device and just going Ch -ch 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 you know <laughs> like the facelift effect right but if we're not getting up underneath a muscle we're not going to release it and you guys know if you've watched me any amount of time that my three steps to anti-aging my process that i go through with clients is I always do targeted massage, which helps release muscles that get overworked. You don't want to overwork an already overworked muscle. And so this is a process that actually helps release a muscle as it's tightening. I know it's strange, but yeah, if you're digging up underneath there the way you should be, it's going to start to release these cheekbones so that they can sort of lift up. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it does. 
these vectors and also it's going to lift areas of common facial sags. So I like to do this one because this helps with the jowls. Now you will use conductive gel. I just have makeup on, so I'm kind of gliding it very lightly. But what you want to do is have a conductive gel really full of minerals. That's not going to dry out on you too quick. And if it does dry out on you, don't worry. You can just uh, you know grab some tap water or spring water, mineral water, anything with minerals. And that is what carries the current, the minerals. And yeah, you'll just do the vectors. And so this is a vector from the middle of the chin here, underneath here. This is a vector, which I need to do more of. I swear my chin is starting to fall again. And this is not working because it's not beeping. If, it's, if you have a, a, a Clairbin Mini, it beeps when it's working. And that's just the timer, really. And my, my skin is not, let's see, if I hold it one place, it will do it. My skin's not shellacquered in conductive gel. So you're going to do these vectors to lift areas of common facial sag. And if you do these five minutes added to your regular routine or cut out five minutes, I mean, if it's like a laser or something, subtract five minutes from that device because you don't want to overuse a laser. You don't want to overuse radio frequency. So subtract five minutes from the end of your time that you usually use with it and do your vectors on each side of your face. This is a vector. This is a vector in front of the ear. This is a vector behind the ear. Vector up under the chin. Yeah, and so when we do these vectors, it's almost like a micro, micro facelift, right? And so a lot of times we'll get devices and we'll go around and around the eye. That's fine, but what about lifting the eye? And I like to lift the eye by doing, actually, you can do the vectors only, but you can do this whole frontalis muscle. And so it's the opposing muscle to the eye muscles and it will keep it coming up the whole eye. But you can just do the vector. Like if you went to the plastic surgeon and they were doing a heat-based treatment, you know, like HIFU, radio frequency, any of the heat-based treatments that they do, they would do these vectors. They would go, chk, chk, chk. <laughs> you know, they, they can write up on the face and they will work on certain areas that you need. So try the vectors, try adding them into your routine and see if you don't get a better lift than just doing your manufacturer's regular routine. I find that even if I don't have enough time to do the whole grid, like with this, they do like a whole grid on the face, right? And it's a good starter routine for sure. And I do recommend the way Claire Blend does it. They have a nice diagrams with all the steps and exactly where you start and end. But I think that once you do those and you add in five minutes of the vectors, you're gonna get stellar results. It's what I do to all my clients to get that extra oomph, that extra lift, and it works every time. Okay, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye now.